All right, we've now been joined by Brody Kostecki. Brody, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you spending time with us. Tell us a little bit about this week, kind of what it's been like getting ready for um, the Indianapolis road course. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a real experience for myself. Uh, you know, I landed here uh, on Friday and uh, been working closely with um, everyone at Richard Children's Racing and, uh, you know, also with everyone at Chevy as well. And, um, you know, been at the GM Tech Center um, quite a bit and I've done around 13, 14 hours in their uh, simulator there and, and uh, just trying to be a sponge and get up to speed as uh, quickly as possible in the short amount of time that I have. All right. Well, now go to questions for Brody. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll work to get a microphone to you. Who would like to kick us off? All right. We'll start with Jordan and then Kelly. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, early impressions of the next-gen car so far from your test? Um, I didn't get the pleasure of doing an on-track test. So I've only done uh, time in the in the uh, driver in the loop simulator at the GM Tech Center. So, but um, honestly, there's, there's a lot of similarities between the Camaro and racing, um, you know, today and and uh, you know what I raced back home in Australia. So um, yeah, first time on track will be in practice. So I'll uh, let you know after that. What would you think of the simulator? What, what did you gain from it? Yeah, it's um, something that we don't do uh, back home at all. So obviously, um, you know, GM built the tech center, I think, 11, 12 months ago. And um, yeah, I was pretty amazed by the, you know, the amount of technology that's in there. And, and um, yeah, really, you know, really helped my learning curve with trying to understand the car and the track as well. And, you know, working closely with the team to, you know, work on setup stuff as well. So, um, yeah, you know, looking forward to jumping in the car and, you know, seeing the, seeing the correlation. A lot of talk about physicality of these races and how it's full contact racing. Um, coming in, are you ready for that? Are you prepared for that? Are you ready to give out as much as you're willing to take? Um, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, what we do back home is quite similar in a way. Um, yeah, there's probably a little bit more rules around our racing back home, but it is pretty similar in a way. So, um, yeah, I'll just do what I do best and drive the car and see what happens. All right, Kelly, go ahead. Kelly Crandall, Racer.com. Brody, have you watched tape of the races here from from the first two years, and what did you think of basically the carnage? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was actually very scared after I uh, when I found out I was doing this race. I um, went back through the last two years and and uh, you know went to study pretty quickly, you know how the race sort of played out and and um, what it was like into turn one. But uh, obviously this weekend there's been changes to the restart zone, so. Um, yeah, it was sort of a bit interesting, um, you know, going back through and, you know, watching how the races played out. But um, I, I honestly think it'll be quite a bit different this weekend with the restart zone. And can you just talk about, I mean, when you were, when you wanted to be a race car driver, w was NASCAR, I think, something that you considered maybe when you were younger? You, you had a, a draw towards NAS NASCAR. So this has kind of been like a long time coming or maybe like, a, a, I guess, a dream come true to be able to run a NASCAR race? Yeah, I spent um, around four to five uh, years in America. Um, yeah, I came over, I think, in you know, 2012, I believe, and um, raced in NASCAR late models and raced the K&N E-Series. So it's, um, yeah, it's funny how the, the world works and it's come around in full circle. And, and um, yeah, went back home and, um, yeah, competing in the Australian Supercars Championship and, and uh, you know, leading that at the moment. And then, you know, being able to get this opportunity with, every, you know, with everyone at RCR and, and uh you know, Richard to come and, you know, make my cup debut. So, yeah, it's sort of done a full circle, which is pretty cool. All right, next we're going to go to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Talk about your preparation for practice, how important it is. It's very short. And what are your thoughts about qualifying? Yeah, it's been, you know, the procedure and format here is a lot different than back home. You know, we, our, you know we're still... Um, similar to how NASCAR was prior to COVID. So, um, yeah, not much time to get accustomed to everything. And, um, yeah, look, like I said, being able to spend, you know, 13, 14 hours at the GM Tech Center and the uh, simulator there has been pretty crucial into, you know, I think how practice is going to play out. So, um, yeah, we've only got 20 minutes of practice and straight into qualifying. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to, you know, make sure that I, you know, hit my marks early and um, I've been given all the tools and, and uh, everything around me to, you know, to be able to perform well. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty confident going to practice that, um, you know, as long as, you know, what happens with the weather, we'll uh, see what happens. All right, we're going to go to Bob and then to Nate. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Um, I assume that, you, that your decision to run this race was made before SVG won Chicago, correct? Uh, so with his winning it, did it 
bring any more attention to your doing this? Uh, no, I think um, yeah, we've been working on this for around about two years now um, with everyone at RCR and and uh, yeah, we sort of looked at the calendar and um, you know my options to come over and do a race are quite quite limited on the fact that you know we race back home as well. So uh, there was only a few races that weren't conflicting. One of them was Chicago and uh, the other one was Indy. And and uh, with how RCR performed here last year, um, you know we circled that on the calendar um, quite a while ago. So. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously, what Shane did at Chicago was um, you know pretty amazing. But um, yeah, I think it's very uh, different circumstances here here this weekend. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Brody, when SBG won at Chicago, there's a lot of focus on his heel toe, uh, right foot breaking. Are you a heel toe guy? Yeah, pretty much. 90% uh, of everyone back home in Australia, right foot breaks. Um, it's just something that we have to do with our cars back home and it's it's sort of been you know the fastest way we get our supercars around so if you don't do it back home you don't really sort of make it so do you think it would be I know this is a different track but do you feel like that'll be an advantage tomorrow and and was there any sort of amusement for supercars drivers or people in Australia that there was all this attention and focus on that when it's so normal over there yeah it's quite amazing obviously seeing um, you know, each sport's different in their own ways. And to be honest, I don't know if it's going to help me or may, you know, hinder me. Um, I won't know till I drive it in practice. So, um, but yeah, we'll just have to sort of see. But it's, you know, seems seems pretty cool that it's, you know, different over here to right for break and heel toe. So, you know, that was pretty cool to see the onboard of Shane. That's something that we didn't really get to see much of back home. All right, we're going to go to Pat with MRN and then we're going to come back up front and do Bruce and Lewis. Go ahead. Brody, when... You, well, first off, Shane set the bar pretty high when it comes to coming in and being competitive. But before that, road course ringers coming in and, and winning races, it had been a long time since anybody had been competitive. How difficult do you anticipate that to be going into Sunday's race, not just running laps and getting used to it, but actually being able to go out there, be competitive, and maybe get a win? Yeah, I think um – yeah, there's no secret that there's been ringers in before and, um, you know, I've been fast at times, but, you know, I haven't, you know, won races and then, you know, sort of Shane come over and, and you know, first time in a street circuit, the weather, whatnot, and that's sort of, you know, our, our bread and butter back home is, you know, racing on street circuits and it's something that you can't actually go practice on. So, um, yeah, well, that was pretty cool to see, but, um, you know, honestly, with how many uh, road courses are on the NASCAR schedule now, uh, all the drivers here have put in a lot of effort into their uh, road course program. So, um yeah, it's definitely not going to be easy, and these guys are really good at, you know, what they do. It's one step at a time, but when it comes to, you, you talked about this being taking two years in the making to get this done. Is this something that you want to do more of, or is it just, you know, take the weekend day by day and then go from there? Yeah, I sort of don't look, at, you know, too much into the future. I just sort of see how this weekend sort of plays out and, and um, just see what opportunities come up if, if they do after this weekend. But, um, yeah, I sort of don't... Uh, I live one day at a time, really. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, we're going to come back up front to Bruce. Go ahead. Uh, Scott, uh, McLaughlin's had a lot of good things to say about you. How much have you spoken with him? And a second question is, when did you first become aware of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and what does it really represent to you? Yeah, I've known about Indianapolis Motor Speedway ever since I was, um, you know, quite young. Um, I've always watched the Indy 500. I, I was able to come over here last year and, and, um, you know, watch Scotty, uh, you know, do his thing in IndyCar, which was really cool. And um, he's someone that I lent on quite a bit uh, when I made my debut back home uh, for the Supercars Championship. So, um, yeah, I haven't asked him too much, um, you know, about the NASCAR side of things coming over and doing this. Um, it sort of seems like two different worlds in a way. All right, Lewis. Uh, Brody, earlier today... Um Kamui said that NASCAR races weren't broad stopped being broadcast in Japan. So my question is, it, are they being broadcast in Australia, and does everybody have to make an excuse for being late to work on Monday morning? <laughs> Funny enough, uh, yeah, every race is actually, every cup race is broadcasted back home um, on, on uh, Sunday, which is really cool. And uh, I have seen a lot of posts saying that people aren't going to be making it uh, on Monday with um, Shane and myself racing, which is you know, obviously really cool having so much you know, support from back home and uh, was able to do a, a fan day um, in uh, the town of Speedway here in Indy um, and had a lot of support there as well, which has been really cool. All right, so, go ahead. 
So I don't know if you really had a chance to see the fans yet, but supercars in America has really blown up within the last few years. And obviously with the V8 supercars endorsement of being on your car, wanting to grow stateside, um, how much does it mean to have their endorsement and how has the reception been to you with the fans that already have shown up, even the American fans that are supercar fans at this point? Yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. I, you know, I did a signing session, um, you know, I think, uh, yesterday at Speedway and, uh, and you know, it was really cool. I was you know signing photos of my um, you know Chevrolet Camaro from back home, which was something that really surprised me at the time. And um, but you know before my time racing supercars back home, they have come come raced in America at Coda, and um, yeah, yeah, was quite popular. So yeah, it was sort of you know really you know really cool to see that the following starting to grow, and and um, obviously to have you know the support from everyone back home and um, you know supercars as well was is uh, really cool. All right, Brody, thank you so much for spending time with us. Best of luck this weekend. Thanks for uh, coming over and hanging out with us. Thank you.